96.7 FM, WORX. Hello, and thank you for tuning in this morning. 9 or 3 a.m. up here on Telegraph Hill. It's the, well, it's not the first Tuesday in the month of November, but it is the first Wednesday, and it's the first Wednesday following a holiday, so therefore, it is time once again for Veterans Talk, brought to you by Farmers Bank of Milton. Always look forward to doing this show. Chance to check in on our good friend, Let's see, that is the Outreach Coordinator for the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs, Joe DeVito. Joe, as always, I appreciate you coming on the program. Well, thank you so much for having me. Once again, very much appreciated. So, uh, again, this is just our opportunity to uh, reach out to our area veterans, talk about some of the... uh, some of the benefits that are available for them. That's I know you know we talk about it a lot, but when we first started doing this program, you were Jefferson County's veteran service officer. So that's kind of the overall theme of the program is typically the very. If, if everybody has just one takeaway from the show, it's you know talk to your VSO. That that's the ticket right there. Um, like you said, I, I was uh, honored to be the Jefferson County veteran service officer for a few years uh, back in the day, and uh, that mantle has now been passed to Faith Weir, who is just um, really I I can't say enough about the job Faith and Sue do down at the office. Um, When I was working as a district service officer I had 16 county service offices in my district um, in southeast Indiana so I got to get to know all of them really well and um, through our conferences I got to know obviously some other counties throughout the state now with my job being statewide visiting and and getting to know even more offices and and um really just top notch right here in jefferson county that they do an amazing job um and that's what they're there to do is is interact with our veteran community and help them understand all of the federal and state benefits that are out there what they're available for and it's it's not just that they'll help you apply they'll help you through the entire process and then help you maintain your benefits and and uh, all along the way so and it's as easy as uh, making a phone call, setting up an appointment, or in some cases, you know, just walking through the door and meeting with them. Absolutely, that and it really is that simple, and and it's also that necessary. Um, we've got some great um, resources out there. VA.gov. You go to VA.gov. Uh, they've got their web page laid out really well. You can find out all sorts of great information there about benefits, about programs to do with the VA for all for, for the entire veteran community. Um, you can check out our our website as well, which is uh, in.gov forward slash DVA, um, and that's our Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs website. Ours once again, we've we've uh, even reworked it some more now, and the website is just uh, everything you need to know is available when you open up the home page and just click one click away to all the information you need. Once again, that's that's a great resource, but that's information. That that's that's maybe a starting point, but it is not an end point. We really we really want to get our our every veteran. In, in with their county veteran service officer, have a seat, make an appointment, take the time to really find out individually what's available for you. Um, and that's what's most important because there's a lot of benefits out there that are kind of hanging in the wind that veterans are they're, they're eligible for and they just don't know. Uh, so we really want to get them in there. And it's, it's, and it's twofold because you can identify uh, benefits that you may qualify for right now. But you can also learn about benefits down the road that could be extremely helpful. Um, and as you know, um, when it comes to any sort of a service, when somebody needs something, it's a crunch time. It, it's a, it, it's panicky, and you got to get something going, especially with uh, pension benefits for our widows, for our older veterans, when they go into assisted living or nursing care. Those bills start coming, and it's a it's a it's a frenzy to try and get those applications together. So you know to know about things ahead of time and get them prepped. Your service officer can put you in our claims management system, upload all the documents necessary. So any point down the road, you're ready to go, and that's really important too. So it's not just what's available to you now; it's what's available to you in the future. And then you want to continue uh, that process as well. And it's another thing that you know we've talked about before, where from when you first started coming on the show to you know, this point today, even then, things that we talked about, you know, the first time that you were coming on the show, those programs had developed and they have expanded things like that. I know you know, we talk about Agent Orange a lot when we talk about the Vietnam vets and the available coverage gets expanded out as we talk more about you know uh, 
more soldiers that were overseas qualify that initially didn't qualify for certain things. That's great, and, that, and that's a great point. Um, one of those reasons to not only get to your service officer, but maintain that relationship. And you know, I think of it like your doctor. You should check in at least once a year. Yeah. Make an appointment and go see go see your uh, your service officer. And and the Vietnam. Um, Veterans is a great example. Not long ago, we had a show about the Blue Water Navy guys. So there was a bunch of sailors who were in Navy ships um, who were off the coast of Vietnam, and, and we had our presumptive disorders with Agent Orange, Agent Orange exposure for the boots in the ground Vietnam veterans, but it was never eligible to the sailors off the coast. Now, a bunch of them have been qualified. So they were always called Blue, Blue Water, the Blue Water uh, veterans. So that that changed big change right there um and that's something you need to know and then really with the ever changing benefits you know eligibility for other things state benefits is tied in with federal eligibilities and vice versa so it it's that constant maintenance it is you know just having somebody like Faith Weir and the other veteran service officers, these are things that you know they're keeping track of this every day. So having them, having them in your corner to keep you posted on things when you check in on them, that's a, it's just a valuable resource. It sure is. It it, it is, and and you know we've got some great ones all around Southeast Indiana and really throughout the state. Um, you know the the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs has been working diligently with all the county governments and the county service officers to to work as a team. It's it's an interesting set up because the the basic breakdown is federally states are required to provide service officers now it's up to the state to see how they do that some states like indiana go by county so in indiana then under indiana code 1017-1 says that every county must either hire or appoint a veteran service officer so the county is putting that person in place the county is paying for that person's salary. The county is paying for the office. The office supplies any support staff, anything they need. It's a county employee or an appointed county official. But they work in conjunction with the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs. So some of the hiring aspects for service officers are tied in with IDVA. There's some supervision work tied in with the IDVA. So it's, it's pretty convoluted government system. I think we're all probably used to those. So really, it, it, it's a partnership that there's been some great strides made, and, and I think is a good one. Because, you know, a, a county, a county, a person from the county, uh, a veteran from that county, someone who works in that office, they know the county, they know the people, they know the area. And they're, they're a great resource. So what we do on a state level is we just want to provide all the support we can. One of the things we do is our district service officers cover those counties, so they will go to the county service officer's office, help them with training, help them with difficult claims, do on-site training for staff, help them set up events and, and uh, do events in the community for outreach and to get folks in the office, so there to support them once again. Uh, what we've done is we created our, our Vetrospect claims management system we're using statewide now, so every county service officer is using the same system. Uh, uh, IDVA also will pay for the one account for every uh, for every county as well, so we can really help get everybody using that. And I think we're almost 88 or 89 counties now that are all fully operational with Vetrospec out of 92. So, and that's a great resource too. They can transfer those files back and forth to each other, um, and it, and these are things that just make it easier for the veteran to get service and to get good service no matter where they go. As we're talking about different things going on uh, for our area veterans, uh, a week from today actually is a, you know, a significant day for us uh, here at Veterans Talk. It's uh, certainly a, a day we look forward to every year. Absolutely. It's uh, it's Veterans Day and uh, it, it's, it's the one day a year that um, we have lots of programs usually lots of events usually <laughs> and other things going on usually but we're in this funky odd COVID-19 pandemic times where most events I know of are not actually going on. Right, and but, it's, uh, and, but it, it's it's difficult uh, because normally we have normally we have Faith Weir up here to talk about you know we have a veteran stand down coming up or we have other 
each individual school does their thing uh, on the local level. A lot of things get done. I know we've had parades in the past, so it is unfortunate just given the current circumstances, but we certainly want to make sure veterans know how much they are appreciated. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's funny. We were talking the other day, uh, director Weimer and myself, uh, Gabrielle and Mike, who were here, we all had to, yeah. had the, the team down here one time and we were all joking that this is probably the first veterans day in all of our careers that we may actually have the day off. <laughs> um, usually there's, we're all going in different directions. Um, meeting at different schools, doing public speaking events, and uh, you know, just doing things for Veterans Day, which is, which is a great day. I mean, you know, we all look forward to it, but with, with the lack of events this year, there's really not much going on. Um, but we do have a couple things going on, and I want to d let everybody out there know right now, if there is something going on or some sort of an observance, you know, definitely give folks up here at the radio station a call so they can get the word out and let anybody know what's going on. Um, I do know that the VA is, uh, you know, working as hard as everybody else to not let uh, the pandemic completely derail uh, observance of Veterans Day. So um, if you go to uh, va.gov forward slash vets day v-e-t-s-d-a-y they've actually got a whole um whole page dedicated to virtual va events so you can go on there and see all different virtual events going on all across the country <clears throat> to help observe veterans day and they also have a couple other resources on there they have a history page of veterans day which is great if you want to learn um, particulars about the history of the day and where it came from and the origins and how it's observed and there's also a teacher's guide on there as well so this is a great opportunity for any teachers and school programs to utilize this resource and, and get into that teacher's guide and I know this year um, all the way across the state everyone we've spoken to and our partners at the Board of Education have let us know that most of the schools that have Veterans Day programs are just doing in-house so they're just gonna have the, the staff and students that are already there and they're going to have an observance there, but not have veterans come in or have speakers and all that, which is understandable with the pandemic stuff. But um, this is a great opportunity for them to help fill that day and, and get some good resources from that veterans uh, that teacher's guide on vets.gov forward slash uh, or va.gov forward slash vets day. So that's a great thing to look at there as well um, for, you know, opportunities for folks to do programming. We definitely appreciate the work that the folks have put in in our community to making these events possible, and I know it is an unfortunate loss, but there are still opportunities, you know, there are opportunities to recognize veterans, there are opportunities to honor them. I think it's really cool here in Jefferson County, you know, we have the, in downtown Madison, we've got the banners up, and that's just one further way of recognizing the service and the sacrifice of our area veterans, and just... Obviously, we can't express our gratitude for them enough. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, and some people are, you know, the creative ideas are out there. I spoke with um, uh, folks from Shaw the other day, and I know they're going to have just uh, a veteran drive by the school where I think the students will go out on the road and, and give a wave, and uh, the veterans can honk and do a drive by, which I thought was outstanding. And, yeah. and you know, I, hopefully we can maybe take that train right downtown, right down Main Street as well, and get everybody from our businesses and folks downtown as well to maybe give them a wave. So uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of the folks at Shaw, let's, you know, that'd be, that'd be great. Or just get out there and, and thank a veteran. Um, that's what it's about, is we want to thank them. We, we hear the term, thank you for your service all the time and you know what that means your particular service is individual to each veteran um, we all did different things in the military we all went to different places um, some had super exciting careers some not so exciting some some overseas some some stayed right here in on US soil so it's very different for them but what we are thanking them commonly for is is you know, I would say the word sacrifice is what it is. Um, and that's what they did. You know, every veteran took an opportunity to raise their hand, um, take an oath to the country, to the branch of service, and dedicate their time, all of their time, for that four years, um, to serve their country and to do what they were asked to do to protect all of our freedoms here at home. Um, and that can be from peeling potatoes 
to going into a war zone in Afghanistan. Um, but whatever they were asked to do, they did. Um, and they stood up, they took that oath and, and for everybody. Um, and that, it's a rare thing for people to do that. So that sacrifice, that willingness to do that is what we're thanking them for on Veterans Day. Absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head just a lot of times. It's, it's those thankless tasks that you just don't really associate with work that the military is doing for you um, just across the board that it's not always about you know the guy that rushes into battle with the bayonets it is about all the guys that are making it possible to protect him and you know get the mission done yeah, absolutely it, it's a machine uh, every branch is a uh you know, broken down, it, it, it's a finely tuned machine where, you know, every single cog, every single piece has its part to do and that's what makes that machine run. And and learning that that teamwork, learning that sacrifice and learning how to do your part um, and, and is, is such a key part is what folks learn in the military. And it's why veterans make great employees. So if you're out there looking to hire, Stop by work one. We've got uh, DevOps and Leavers right there w willing to help veterans. And it's a great opportunity to talk about some of the partnerships we do. So our partners at Department of Workforce Development um, have these DevOps and Leavers. I'm going to butcher the uh, acronyms here. But the DevOps are Disabled Veteran Outreach something um, and what they are there they're to help veterans uh, find opportunities for jobs so they're there to help veterans gain employment uh, that they're looking for and mostly focusing with veterans who may have certain barriers to employment whether that's service connected issues or not and the other ones there the leavers I'm not even attempt to tell you what that stands for but what their job is to actually work with employers to encourage them and help them find veterans to work for them. So an another great um, opportunity for veterans to have, you know, state agencies working together. Um, those, those folks do a great job and they're almost, I think there's usually a DVOP and Lever, I think at almost every single work one office in the state. So another great opportunity for veterans. So Joe, as we work our way towards the end of the program, anything else you want to add today? Yeah, I wanted to throw out a couple of, um, a couple opportunities to help celebrate Veterans Day. Um, um, that we're working on with uh, our team, our outreach team at IDVA. And um, if you go to our webpage, um, in.gov forward slash DVA, you'll see right there in the top left, there's a button that says social media. If you go to that button, it'll take you the links to all of our social media pages. Um, and if you go on those and take a look, we've got a couple things that we're doing. We're doing a virtual Veterans Day 5K. So we are encourage anybody to go out there and walk, run, ride a bike, do, do uh do a 5K, take some pictures along the way, and then uh, submit your pictures. We'll post them on the website and just a way to get out there. And a lot of, there's usually those kind of events going on, but not this year. So you can go out and do your own little 5K. And if you have a veteran that you're wanting to dedicate it to or you're doing it for or doing it with, um, you know, feel free to get your names up there and we'll post those. And we're also doing a, um, I um, won't say a contest, but we're doing an opportunity for kids to draw a picture of a veteran in their family or a loved one or a friend. Any, any, any pictures will do. We're getting, some, we're getting some great ones from some really, really well artistic kids to some crayon drawings. But just draw a picture of a veteran. You can send that into our social media. We'll be posting all those as well. So just some, some small opportunities for us to help get the word out there and say thank you to our veterans and uh, let people know that we appreciate them. Uh, I know we usually have a very uh, nice program at the Indiana Veterans Memorial Cemetery uh, this year. No, cer no ceremony this year, but it's open just as usual. And I know Alan and the staff will, will work hard and I think uh, they'll put, be putting flags out at all the grave markers this year. So it looks a little festive, a little, a little something going on for Veterans Day. So if you want to come up, like I said, the it's cemetery's open with all of our uh, COVID guidelines and social distancing. So if they want to come to the cemetery on that day as well, they can come on up as well. So, uh, we definitely uh, definitely appreciate the folks that uh, are you know working to create these opportunities and uh, just op chances to recognize those veterans. Love the photo contest, love the virtual 5K. Uh, very easy things to participate in too. They are, and, and really, if you want to thank a veteran, if you, want, if you know a veteran in your life, whether it's a family member, a friend, a neighbor, someone who is in the military, and you want to say thank you on Veterans Day, 
tell them to go see their county veteran service officer. That's the best way you can thank them is get them in front of the person who can help them understand the benefits. And and you know we've spoke about benefits before. Um, you can go see your CVSO for details. But I mean we got you know possible remission of full tuition and fees for the children of veterans, uh, property tax abatements, license plate programs. There's just so many state programs, let alone fed federal that it's really worth their time to go see them. Absolutely. Well, um, I know at least one veteran that I have in my life that I can say, go see your veteran service officer, and he is a veteran of the United States Coast Guard. So, Joe, when you get the opportunity, go see your county veteran service officer. Um, I'll go see Faith when I leave here. Easy to have. Well, Joe, definitely appreciate you coming on the program. Right on. Thank you so much, and thanks again to our sponsors. Absolutely. So that's Joe DeVito. He is the Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs Outreach Director. Thank <laughs> you.